Hey all, Lance with Brando Consulting here, inventory expert since 2006. I've been thinking for the past few days to create an fishbowl manufacturing demo. What I want to do is just go over the manufacturing features in fishbowl. So usually to start with manufacturing, you need a bill of material, right? So we got a bill of material screen here. On the bill of material screen, we've got a finished good. You can have multiple finished goods and a lot of raw goods. We've got uh, labor and overhead. We've got non-inventory and inventory. There's all kinds of things you can put in this bill of material. But sometimes you may not want to have a bill of material. You may just want to create a custom work order. Bills of material is for repeated standard manufacturing, right? So if you want to create a custom work order, then you may think, well, let's go to the work order screen, but actually that's not the case. Look, there's no new button here on the work order screen to click new. Um, you actually go to the manufacturer order screen, create a manufacturer order, and then you add a work order to the manufacturer order screen. So on the manufacturer order screen, you can have multiple work orders, whether they're related to each other, because they're all at the same work order station, or maybe they're related to each other because they're all done on the same day, or maybe they're related to each other because they're um, sub-levels and they're all connected. However you decide you want to organize it, um, the manufacture order is where you start, and then on here on this screen, you either add Bill's material or you click on the green plus sign right here to add a custom work order. That's what this little custom button is here. If you click on that and click next, it says, okay, we're going to add a bomb. Actually, we're adding a work order. And we add the finished good first. See here is finished goods. Notice you can have multiple finished goods because something you produce may also produce a byproduct. Um, it's rare, but there the flexibility is there for you and then click next and it advances to raw goods and you can add raw goods for a custom work order now this is on the manufacturer order screen but you can also add custom work orders to the sales order screen which kind of makes more sense right if you're creating a sales order let's go here and click new click and put in a customer there we go so custom sales order kind of um, leans more towards customers asking for something specific to them it's no longer standard we're sort of surrendering to whatever the customer wants right and it's more of a build to order type of situation so on the sales order screen in that case we can click on this little new button here and here we have a radial button that says custom work order click next and we're in this wizard for custom work orders add the finished good now oftentimes when you're doing custom work orders you may be creating a new part don't let that scare you fishbowl doesn't have any limit to as number of parts you can have you can, can get creative also. There's different ways of doing this. Uh, having a service type item be your finished good. Um, having a non-inventory type item be your finished good. You can also have an inventory type item be your finished good. You know, play with it. Before you go live, always, always test it out and figure out what workflow process is best for you and which features work. So, um, Back here on, on this screen, you can create a new part. If we come up with something, we can add new, or we may have sort of a standard part that we call custom something. And then once that's selected, then we add our raw goods. So that's the creation. Um, those are the different options in the system to create work orders, either from a custom or a bill of material. So then after you create a work order, we need to decide when do we want to build it, right? 
um, we have to have the inventory in stock in order to build it. So we may ask, when are we getting the inventory in stock? Um, maybe it's already there. Maybe we purchase that inventory. Maybe we manufacture that inventory to get it in stock. And we have multi levels that we're manufacturing, right? Maybe a vendor manufactures it for us, you know, with, with outsource manufacturing. So there's a lot of things to consider when we're scheduling a work order. If we look over here, I've got some work orders already in the system. So let's take a look. These, we've got an entered status and these, we've got an issued status. Now, how I like to look at it is entered means we haven't scheduled it yet. You can use the features, um, in a way that's best for your company. This is kind of the most common, right? If it's just entered, that means the inventory, all the raw goods, are not allocated to the finished good. Basically, the system doesn't see it until up here in the top left-hand corner, you click Issue. The system basically thinks it doesn't exist. I mean, it's obviously there, but um, it doesn't calculate the demand for the raw goods. It doesn't add the demand quantity to the raw goods. And also it doesn't see that you are creating a finished good to fulfill another work order or a sales order. So those, those calculations, those numbers aren't there, right? Um, and you can see what I'm talking about if you skip over to the part screen and look at this inventory area where you've got allocation and on order those are the numbers i'm talking about so let's go back to the manufacturer order. here we go um down here in the bottom you've got a start and a finish and up here at the top you have a date scheduled so the manufacturer order has a date scheduled that shows up over here these scheduled dates apply to the work order, this line right here. So also you'll notice that there is a station. Now this is kind of cool. Let me move my camera, there we go. Okay, so you'll notice in this example I have names. I don't think that's the most popular example. I think this example is a little more popular where I have blending, bottling, encapsulating. So those are the different stations that the work order would performed in, right? So you would um, schedule those stations. Now those stations are not locations. Those stations are actually created on the calendar screen. And that's what makes them cool is it's sort of a, a capacity planning tool. So if I scroll down and I say, okay, this is a labeling work order. Notice the color was black and it says 12, 15, 2018. I'm going to play with that and say, let's say it's um, next on that. Day. And then yes, you have to also change the finish date and time. So that one was September 9th. I'll go September 9th. It started at 9 a.m. Um, 12 a.m. And save that. Now if we go to the calendar, the calendar, and look at that day, look at that. There it is. There's that work order. I'm going to change the view up here in the top left hand corner. I've got week. I'm going to change the view to week. Got these two arrows right here. I'm going to go to next week. And now we can see that and I can change the duration to last longer. I thought I did that back on the previous screen. I guess I didn't save it properly. But there we go. That saves that work order and shows up on the calendar to be performed on that day. Now here's your categories that you can use to create these different work order stations. Play with those stations and customize them to the way you need them. So then the next step, once you've got it scheduled, then you'll want to go pick it. Start the work order and pick it. Picking is found under sales. Change the filter to work orders so we only see work order picks. 
and then look to see what work order is scheduled to be picked that day and also take a look at the availability colors. If it's green, that means you have enough in stock. If it's yellow, then you don't. You can't start it. I mean, you can, but it wouldn't be smart. It wouldn't be a good idea. You shouldn't start it. So here we start the work order and go ahead and pick it. What I like to do also is first start the pick, print the pick ticket out, say, hey guys, go get that. And then just to update the status of the work order, we can either click on this link or click on this link to work order and then click start to change the status of the work order to start it. Then from here, we click on preview of the work order traveler, click finish and voila, there's the work order traveler that tells them what they should consume. It tells them the recipe basically and your guys are supposed to write down, or the supervisor should write down what was used and what was yielded. Here's a better example of a work order. It's got more stuff on it. You can see they can write down in each one of these lines what they used, even what they scrapped. Now scrap, the best way to track that is overconsumption. There's other ways of doing it, but uh, that's the best way I've found in fishbowls over consuming it. So you'll just write it there, you'll write use there, and then these guys will bring the work order traveler back to the office or back to the desk and go back into Fishbowl and record what was what was consumed and what was yielded. Click on quick build here. It brings us to the picking screen. All of these items should already be picked in a previous step, which in this case they were. If they had to go out and grab something that uh, was necessary because they miscounted or um, probably a better example is they damaged something so they had to go grab something else then this is where you would modify the pick and say ah oh, we actually ended up picking two of those instead and you would modify the pick there then on this next screen you'll compare the quantities to the work order traveler you saw on the previous screen, what was handwritten on the work order traveler. And there you would say, well, they picked 22, but they only use 20. This is common in the food industry, right? Where you just pick everything that's in the box or everything that's on the pallet, you bring it over. And when you pick, you should pick what you actually picked. You should record what you actually picked is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then you should record what you actually consume. Now what does Fishbowl do with the difference, you may ask, is it leaves it in the manufacturing area, right? It doesn't know where to put it back, so it leaves it in the manufacturing area, and then with another step you can move the excess material that you picked in abundance uh, using the move feature to move it back into stock if you'd like to do that or you can leave it in manufacturing and pick from manufacturing for your next work order right okay so a lot of flexibility here um, the main thing to understand is the bill of material is the recipe it's like the recipe book um, the work order is the bill of material multiplied you know how many cakes are you, ma are you making the recipe says one cake the work order says a hundred cakes right and then the work order traveler is a record of what you actually used and then right here is your actual consumption that you're putting in all right so then on this next screen we enter in what we actually yielded now this is a rare example right here where we're yielding two different items you know maybe you had leftover cake batter and you made cupcakes as well and you weren't really planning on that but you just went ahead and made cupcakes or another example I've seen is in plastic resin blending uh, they have leftover um, byproduct uh, at the filter and so they produce resin that they sell but then a powdery substance that they bring through the wash line or another example is um, 
tar or caulk where it's all blended and most of it goes into five gallon buckets but then they might use they may produce some that goes into tubes or you know who knows there's it's good to have the flexibility so you can use the software best for you and then um, you can divide the cost up if this is more of a byproduct oh yeah another example is a company I helped that produced um, styrofoam tubes you know like those little tubes you play with in the swimming pool yeah so these guys made those tubes and when it first came out of the extruder it produced waste and at the end of the extruder and sometimes when they cut it off it produced waste but the waste could be regrounded and reused and so the waste was an actual byproduct it was an actual product that was produced with the part numbers so that was uh, the finished good part and they may or may not want to apply a cost to that. So some flexibility there. So we click finish and there you go. That's the, that's the work order process, hopefully from um, soup to nuts. I was able to show you all the main features, at least, you know, you saw the bill of material, you saw uh, a work order creation, or excuse me, a manufacturer order creation with work orders on it. Um, you saw picking the work order and and printing out the pick ticket, printing out the um, the work order traveler. I did not show you mobile picking. I've got another video for that. You can go see mobile picking. Um, of course, that's that's part of it. If you choose to use the mobile device to pick, uh, and you saw closing out the work order. Now, important part is getting the closing of the work order correct because that's that's the point of no return as soon as you click finish at the end of that work order wizard it creates a journal entry to send to quickbooks um, crediting your uh, raw goods any accounts that your raw goods were mapped to and debiting whatever accounts your finished goods do. so in your raw goods list whether it was labor, overhead, non-inventory, or an inventory type part, whatever you chose for your raw good and whatever account those raw goods were mapped to will receive a credit at the value it was at that time that you click that finish button. So if you're on the average costing method, it's going to take the average cost at that moment that you click the button and, um, and then it will take the difference between um, what you're adding or maybe if it's a different account um, whatever is necessary to bring the finished good account up to what it should be will be the the journal entry definitely something uh, you should take a look at in QuickBooks I may have another video on that and maybe I should create one to show a, a work order accounting transaction that it creates but Definitely want to get that last step right. One common um, mistake I see with finishing out a work order wrong is Fishbowl has a setting under these module options that is too often a default setting. It says auto advance to work order finish step. If that box is checked, then you're going to skip that picking step and that consumption step where you enter the actual consumption and you know if if you're being lazy and you you're not recording what was actually picked you're not recording what was actually consumed then your inventory is going to be off so if you're having a problem with your inventory being off that's definitely something to check for Hope you enjoyed this video today. Um, if you have any requests, let me know. Comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.